My Wash Cycling has been doing a lot for indoor cycling recently and they have been in the news a lot too. And uh, I have a few thoughts about this app. So let's talk about My Wash Cycling. Hey, what's up guys? This is Al Tariq here. The indoor cycling industry is a tough business. Uh, you basically got Peloton, Zwift, and everyone else. Peloton and Zwift has somewhat similar strategies but cater to slightly different audiences. Peloton emphasizes on studio-like experience with their instructor-led classes and making you feel like you've got your personal trainer right there in your home. They have more curated and structured approach and often tied to Peloton's own hardware like the Peloton bike and Peloton uh, tread. On the other hand, Zwift focuses on the gamification and interactivity and giving you uh, virtual wars where you can cycle through different landscapes, participate in group rides, structured workouts, and even race anybody across the world. My wish is more like Zwift and targets the same audience. So making an app that takes on Zwift is clearly going to be an uphill battle. But hey, if you're going to try, you might as well have a strategy to it. And I think my wash has four strategies. So strategy number one, copy Zwift. My wash's approach has been to incorporate as many features from Zwift as they possibly could, from interface design, virtual worlds, and gamification to social features like group rides, racing, shadow replays, garage and avatar customization, steering, etc. These similarities are clear, but hey, that's not a bad thing. Companies copy each other all the time and having a familiar interface and functionalities makes onboarding new users easier. But they did not stop there. MyWash added its unique flavor on things like the ability to create different riders profile at the login screen, creating virtual wars in places like the Middle East, South America, Australia, and Europe, or the ability to pair a secondary power meter, which is important for validating power data to prevent cheating in events. Their workouts and workout plans are laid out nicely. There are plans for beginners, FTP specific plans, or those targeting specific disciplines such as road racing or triathlon. You also have the ability to create your own workout using their workout builder or sync workouts from other platforms like Training Peaks. But my favorite feature their calendar. They have a full calendar that lets you plan out your workout manually or see your sync bike workouts from platforms like Training Peaks and even show your weekly stats. Pretty cool, right? The app does have its shortcomings. Unlike Zwift, the app is still not available on Macs or Apple TV. The graphics are good and would say possibly similar to what you see on Zwift. However, on my Windows PC, and using that same PC that runs Zwift in 4K ultra resolution at over 100 frames per second, I am only getting 30 frames per second to run my whoosh. There is steering functionalities, but the game physics could uh, be improved. For example, there is no leaning into corners or braking. The structured workout player lacks some functionalities. There is no way to transition between erg mode and resistance mode, for example. You can turn erg mode on and off, but when you turn it off, there is no resistance control that I can see. I do like that they have average power listed though. Their next strategy is creating more virtual worlds. MyWish has been busy building a lot of routes. Similar to Zwift, some are based on real places and some are fictional. They built wars in two different parts of Arabia, in places like Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and Bahrain with a lot of details and pretty cool routes. They have a total of 17 routes in Arabia. Then you have 12 routes in Al Ula, which is an ancient city in the western part of Saudi Arabia that takes me back to my time when I used to live there. They also built virtual worlds in Colombia with 17 different routes, Australia with 7 routes, and Belgium with 7 routes. As of this video, they have a total of 54 routes in 5 different worlds, totaling around 500 miles, which is a lot for a new app and these routes are always available and open to ride at any given day. Their next strategy is hosting events. And I'm not talking about any event. 
I'm talking about going for high profile events with ridiculous prize money. They have the Sunday Club Series for men and women with a prize purse of 65,000 dirham or about $18,000. Also, in April of this year, they hosted the inaugural race championship series with a prize pool exceeding a whopping 1 million US dollars. And just recently, they locked in an exclusive three-year partnership with the UCI for the UCI Cycling Esports World Championship that covers 2024, 2025, and 2026 season, and they stole that away from Zwift. So they seem to be pouring a ton of money in these areas and sponsorship, and that brings them a lot of publicity and attention and shows that they have a lot of money to throw into this platform. The final piece of the puzzle, price. Zwift comes in at $15 per month, which stacks up pretty well against the competition. They have hinted at a price hike, but we haven't seen that happen just yet. My watch, on the other hand, is totally free to use. Yep, create an account for yourself, your spouse, and all your Tuesday ride buddies, and it will cost you absolutely nothing. How is that possible? My wish has some serious backing, including support from the government of the United Arab Emirates and other entities. They seem to have deep pockets to develop and promote the platform. Now, their long-term plan isn't entirely clear, but from my conversations with them, they plan on keeping the platform free for now, and they might possibly add premium features down the road. But despite all the marketing, development, and free costs, Users haven't been flocking to my wish, or they try it out and do not stick with it. When I use the app, I'm usually alone or only with a handful of other riders or bots, and this could mean a few things. Familiarity with existing platforms. Cyclists may already be committed and invested in, in platforms like Zwift, where they've built their social network following, XP points, and cost of switching even to free platform might not outweigh the benefits. Community aspect. Many indoor cyclists enjoy the social aspects of training indoors with others. Zwift has thrived on its large community and that's been their biggest asset. My wash lacks a community vibe. Despite that they offer voice and text chat, it doesn't seem to be used often. Following other users to build your social network is impossible right now. Creating group prize or group of workouts is impossible either and building a user base is extremely hard and takes a long time. My wish needs to find incentive to bring users in and keep them coming back. Things like collecting points, challenges or rewards, possibly improving on their structured training could tap into a lot of cyclists that are looking to be coached. AI and adaptive training is a hot thing these days. So expanding on their training plans and adaptive training could create that hook also improving the in-game workout player to make it easier to control the workout and more user-friendly would also add a lot of value. And this brings me to my last point, which is features and functionality. Sure, free sounds good, but in today's market, free isn't cutting it anymore. My wish still needs to live up to the expectations set by competitors. Uh, users aren't going to tolerate issues, complicated install, and onboarding. In this crowded market, you've got to make your product so compelling from the get-go that cyclists want to come back for more after their initial ride is over. So, what is your take on my wish? If you've tried it, drop your thoughts in the comments. If not, it's totally free, so why not take it for a spin? Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to share this video with others in your life, and do not forget to tap that like button, and if you are still watching but have not subscribed yet, you know what to do. Thanks again, and I'll catch you in the next video.